Now let us see the applications of phase lock loop. The various PLL applications include frequency modulation, stereo decoders, FM demodulation networks for FM operation, frequency synthesis that provides multiple of a reference signal frequency, used in motor speed controls, tracking filters. It is also used in frequency shift keying decoders for demodulation of, demodulation of carrier frequencies. Now there are certain important definitions associated with this PLL that we know we should know. The very first that comes in this is a lock-in range. Once the PLL is locked, it can track frequency changes in the incoming signal. So this lock-in range is defined as the range of frequencies over which the PLL can maintain lock with the incoming signal that is known as lock-in range or tracking range. This is usually expressed as a percentage of FO, that is the free running frequency of the VCO. The next definition is a capture range. The capture range is defined as the range of frequencies over which the PLL can acquire lock with the incoming signal. This is also, this parameter is also expressed as a percentage of FO, the free running frequency of VCO. The next parameter is, the next important definition is pull-in time. The pull-in time is defined as the total time taken by the PLL to establish log. This depends on, this pull-in time depends on the initial phase and frequency difference between the two input signals as well as the overall loop gain and loop filter characteristics. So naturally, we can understand if the frequency, frequency difference is more, it will take a more time to lock. And if the frequency difference is less, it will be locked very soon. So pull-in time essentially depends on the initial phase, difference, phase and frequency difference between two input signals. Now let us see the PLL transfer characteristics. From the transfer characteristic itself, we can observe there is a hysteresis in the PLL transfer characteristics. Now when we see in totality this PLL transfer characteristics, it may be a somewhat difficult to understand. So let us understand one by one when the gradually the frequencies increase and when the gradually frequencies decrease. So for this, this is plotted here this we can see here this is the y-axis is a error voltage and x-axis is a input frequency and this arrow indicating that the gradually we are increasing the frequency so let us say the input frequency is gradually increased so before f1 we can see it is not responding or the vco is running at a free running frequency only the loop does not respond to the signal until it reaches a frequency, let's say F1. The loop suddenly locks onto the input, causing the negative jump of this loop voltage or error voltage. Now at F1, we see a jump. Some error voltage is generated. So it is coming in the capture range. And now when the frequency is again increased, this error voltage is decreasing decreasing as the frequency difference is less and at FO both the frequencies becomes equal and the error voltage is zero. If again the frequency is increased there will be a difference so the negative of negative that is positive error voltage is generated and it will go till it reaches a frequency F2 means up to a lock range we can say it has started from capture range F1 when it was in the capture range and when the frequency difference is increasing and increasing till the lock range it was able to track and at f2 it loses the lock and suddenly it drops to a free running frequency and if again the frequency is increases it remains in the free running frequency only now let us say the frequency is decreasing we are decreasing the frequency. As expected, this change should occur at F2, but it does not occur because there is a hysteresis. So when we are decreasing the frequency, this is running at a free running frequency of VCO. At a certain frequency FT, suddenly there will be a positive jump. A error voltage is generated 
so it is now come in a capture range and now if again the frequency is decreases this error voltage is decreasing decreasing and at fo both the frequencies will be equal so error voltage is zero again if the frequency is decreases this error voltage is going as a negative one as the difference is increasing this error voltage is increasing 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 till it reaches the frequency f4 at which suddenly the loop will come out of the lock and it will jump to a f4 frequency f4 at f4 it will be running in a free running frequency only so no error voltage is there and again if the frequency is de decreases this will go in only a free running frequency so we see this f3 minus f1 this f3 minus f1 is double of capture frequency so we can say this is a capture frequency up to this f4 to f3 is a capture f1 to f4 is a capture that's why f3 minus f1 is a double of capture frequency similarly f2 minus f4 is a double of lock range so we can see this fl is from f4 to f2 means f2 minus f4 is a lock range frequency so now this both the transfer characteristics can be overlapped and can be shown the as a transfer characteristics what we have seen earlier so we can see now both the transfer characteristics are overlapped and this is is very similar to what we have seen earlier what we observe that the pll cannot acquire a signal outside the capture range means you can say f1 when we are increasing and f3 when we are decreasing so pll cannot acquire a signal outside the capture range but once captured it will hold on till the signal frequency goes beyond the lock in range in order to increase the ability of lock in range larger capture range is required however a large capture range will make the pll more susceptible to noise and undesirable signal hence a suitable compromise is required for choosing capture range 